Cody here. Welcome back to Chicken Hole Base. So we're starting off today up by the QEC 1923 Petroglyph Anomaly, the suspected campsite. And as requested, I have brought along a metal detector, which you can see here. My boot's got some metal in it, and it'll make a noise. So let's just uh, scan the area and see if we can locate any uh, artifacts. I particularly want to check on this cave area. I think this is where they may have slept or at least uh, had a campfire. One way or another, the rocks got burned. I'm gonna scan the area here. Yeah, I'm not getting anything. It still works. Yeah, I keep getting my boot there. Oh. Sounds like something. Here. I got something. That looks like a lead mushroom. 22 caliber bullet. So I ended up finding three of the bullets. I think what's happened is somebody shot at this cliff. You can see these marks here. I think those are bullet marks. And the bullet just goes in, stops, and then ended up right down at the base of the cliff. Uh, it's hard to say if it's uh, associated with the petroglyph or not. Uh, they do have a patina, so the bullets could be that old, but they could also just be 10 years old. It's hard to tell. Uh, it's definitely been weathered here. So it's, it's been a while since it was shot, but it's also more exposed than it is up here, so it's really hard to say. I think uh, just pick up my metal detector and head back. That's all I found are those bullets. No, no other artifacts seem to be locatable. And you'll notice I'm on foot. Uh, no electric bike. Now the reason for that is. Well, the suspension on that bike is just not that great. I think it was uh, designed more for flat terrain. Like every time I take it out, it would shake a few bolts loose or really hurt my bottom. Switch blowers there. <laughs> but I've got plenty of range, so it's not a problem for me to hike over here. You guys might be asking uh, why it's been so long since I've had an update. Well, I've kind of just been surviving over the last couple of months. Uh, Robo Cody broke down, needed some extensive repairs, and he's just now recovering from it. Uh, a bud cat around the same time went missing. No idea where he is. He still hasn't turned up. And even the chickens have had to go into storage temporarily. So I've been on my own. Haven't made any significant progress. But hopefully that'll change today. Because we've got Robo Cody again. And uh, some supplies are rolling in. Here's the bee hole. 
bees are doing okay. Hello bees. <laughs> See over here, I've been feeding the bees some sugar water. And you can also see some of the supplies we've been getting. So there's some fuel tanks, which I'll repurpose for use in the greenhouse. Some other tanks here. Fortunately, the trailer ran into a rock bent the rim, broke some cords, and the tire went flat. I hit this rock with the trailer. See, it's behind the sagebrush. Didn't really even see it. Looks like it broke cords and bent the rim. I'll have uh, Robo Cody fix that for me here in a little while. In fact, he's over there getting a uh, update. It'll be good to test him out by changing a tire. He'll certainly do it a lot faster than I will. <laughs> the latest shipment, we also got about half a pallet of fire brick and a furnace module, as you can see there. The idea is that we'll be able to utilize some of these in-situ resources, make uh, building materials, metals and stuff out of the ground. I uh, still need the power supply for it, so we probably won't mess with that this episode. See, I got all kinds of pipes strewn out ready to go into the greenhouse. The uh, new rover, I don't know if I talked about this much, but we've upgraded the rover again. It had some damage, and I've actually repaired the damage here. And if we look in the back of it, let's set that there for now. You can see I've actually got two new tires for that trailer. That way I can replace both tires that are on it and the good tire will be used as a spare. I got a bunch of these little solar lights. Maybe we'll play with those later. Yeah. Turn on the electricity. Let's get into the habitat. Take off this uh, suit. Ooh, okay, there we go. I can sit inside the hab for a little while, relax, charge my batteries. Uh, oh, I'm all sweaty. It is summer. So anyway, I think Robo Cody is done updating. So it's actually take control of him and go change those tires. Okay, so we're just about ready to head off and get the next load of supplies. We got three more tanks that are needed to finish off this little greenhouse. They're sitting about 100 miles away, so we need to go get them. But first, I want to check the torque on these lug nuts. Make sure Robo Cody did it right.
Yeah, they were loose. That's something we can fix in this programming. It's good to know now rather than later. Anyway, I would keep him here and let him uh, do some work on the base, but you never know when he's gonna start construction six feet to the left where he should be, so yeah, he'll come with me. returning to base after a successful mission. Hopefully we now have enough supplies to make some significant progress. I guess I'll just go sit in my little temporary habitat and supervise while Robo Cody does most of the work. Giving Robo Cody the camera so we can go around and see what we've done so far. Got the insulation there, the sump tank is in place and on a concrete slab so it uh, should be much more stable. Most of the siding is on. We're still missing the end caps and some along the side there. Uh, mostly because we need to still get in here and do some plumbing work. The back section is in place. It's not bolted in yet, but that's where it's going to go. So now you can see the full size of this ship. I mean, it is looking huge now. And this is the little greenhouse. I can't wait to see the big ones in play. Uh, you'll notice the siding does not go all the way down to the ground. That's because the ground level will be raised up. It's going to be buried to about here inside and out and possibly higher in the future so the siding didn't have to go all the way down if you look inside you can see the shiny side of the insulation is in i don't know if that's right but it seemed about right i got these cables here which i mostly just put in place so i didn't have to snake it through after we got the siding on. 
Uh, this is gonna be put on here with a cable binder. That'll provide a little bit of compression. We'll have uh, more cables up there as well. And that's so when it's pressurized and the tank is trying to pull apart, the cables will provide a little bit of extra tension to compress it together. Take some load off the bolts as they're bolting together the tanks. Uh, it does need to expand a little bit. And the cables can stretch some uh, just due to thermal expansion. This whole thing is going to slide back and forth just a little bit. And there's no like solid connection. It, it can slide. And if I go over here around my pile of junk, which I think next episode we need to do something about. You see these other two tanks that I got. These are the gas regulator. So this is going to be up on the hill, uh, tipped up, filled with water, and this one's going to be inside of it, floating on the water. And it'll be able to raise up and down as the gas, which is plumbed in from the other, from the greenhouse, the sun hits it, the gas expands, and it'll come in, and this will raise up, taking up and providing extra volume so the pressure doesn't increase. You know, just have some weights on there to keep the pressure constant. Super simple. Hopefully it works. <laughs> uh, this tank here, the pumpkin, uh, it was going to be the back of this greenhouse, but we decided against it. It's just too small. We'll figure something else to do with it. Yeah, um, the chickens, they are not here. They are at my parents' ranch. Uh, because I'm working with this styrofoam and they eat it like candy. I caught one of the hens. She had eaten a softball-sized chunk of the styrofoam and was wanting more. And I don't think that's good for them. Fortunately, she survived, but, you know, it doesn't provide any nutrition and they love to eat it which you know, harm the chicken and harm the structure. So we're going to have the chickens stay away until, until the styrofoam's covered. We also set up this little uh, float watering system. This is both for the chickens and the bees. See, the bees have already found it. Just got a little tank up here, which runs water through a float valve and into this bucket of gravel. Well, that is about it for this episode of Chicken Hole Base. I don't really have anything else that I can do at the moment. Uh, hopefully the next episode won't take so long to come out. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you then.